as I'm saying that there is the draft, so it is what it is. We're going to take a look at that if it becomes relevant at the end of this game. But folks, it's time to jump into game number one here. Give you anxiety versus Voldemort here in the qualifiers for the EGC Finals 2023. It is me, Lidacore, joined by the lovely Crackety. And Crackety, we have a fairly standard matchup when you consider all the new civilizations available. Ottomans versus Mongols. Exactly. Well, we got um, Give You Inside playing as the Mongols, probably one of his main civilizations in the game, I would say. I see GUA play the Mongols a lot. Valdemar on the other side playing the Ottomans. I know that he is definitely familiar with them. And Ottomans, they, they kind of get traded as a little bit of a good civilization into the Mongols. So I think this is a good draft here for Valdemar. Speaking of things that, like, we've spoken of things that are still, like, kind of old patch-wise. We got the Ottomans, we got the Mongols, but what's new here? We're playing on Gorge, one of the new maps in Age of Empires 4. Also a returning map. We had this map back in, um, back in the Red Bull. That was, like, one of the first major custom maps that we had um, for Red Bull Wallow. And it's, it's actually such a beautiful map here. So you got this like big kind of uh, valley in the middle and like all the resources, all the major resources out towards the side. Players have to get out on the map at some point in order to secure resources. You can already see a couple of spearmen coming up from Voldemort, not just with the military school. In fact, he only made a barrack. So immediate aggression coming out from him here. Yeah, that's a very aggressive opening here. But when you consider that he's facing the Mongols, it's definitely justified. There's a barracks coming out as well from GUA. Clear target from Waldemar seems to be the Ovu. And he's just trying to put some early pressure in here, probably force uh, GUA to mix in some of his own spearmen as well. It's an interesting approach, Crackety, because normally it's the Mongol player that dictates the tempo of the game in Dark Age, and they are the ones deciding how many spearmen they are investing into and how aggressive they'll play. But this time around, Waldemar is kind of forcing the hand of GUA here. Yeah, Valdemar is definitely the kind of player that likes to dictate the tempo. He wants to be the one that sets the pace of a match, so it's usually always uh, a lot of aggression out of his side. And he's already got five spearmen out. Now, GUA, he has sort of an advantage if, like, uh, when it comes to like how much he wants to invest into these spearmen, because he can double produce. So to a certain extent, he's going to be saving resources here compared to Valdemar. Also, he's got his gold right next to his TC. So this gold is completely secured. There's not going to be a way for Valdemar to deny an age up here from GUA. And the Khan also gives a lot of value here to GUA. We see him every now and then just sniping these uh, spearmen on the retreat. Right now, Valdemar still has the military lead. And what this did so far for Valdemar is it forced GUA to not even consider an outpost rush so far. Oh, but there's a oh, lot yeah. of idle time. On the TC. Oh no. Oh no. Look at that. Oh, that's a that's a good couple of villagers idle there. Just no sheep under TC. Lots of villagers now being redistributed. Ah, oh, that, that oh, hurts that if you're Valdemar super right now. Sad. That is so sad. In fact, you can actually see a deleted mill on the berries. Valdemar, he went heavy on this aggression, but in a way it's kind of backfiring right now. He invested a lot into those spearmen and it kind of cripples his early game eco. Yeah, this is going to delay him quite a bit when it comes to that age up. And right now, we see Valdemar at 170 food per minute. GUA over 400. He's going to be able to click up very, very soon here. All right. I noticed I was a little bit loud here. Hopefully, it is better now. I adjusted a little bit on my end. Um, Yeah, GUA just about to click up now. Just needs a little bit more gold. Valdemar is still very far away from that age up. I, did he actually go out to the berries? I think he made a mill. Yeah, he has to. He has to do something out there. He was just so low. He was thinking and... about it. He was thinking about it. there. Oh, no. that is. That's oh a... my lord! <laughs> that's an interesting strategy. <laughs> <laughs> he even has the wood to drop the uh, to drop the mining camp. So I'm actually very surprised about this build. It's just he sent a bunch of villagers to take the gold he needs, so he doesn't need to mine anymore. And now he's gonna be so heavy on the berries. But boy, oh boy, you feel like this build order is just so flawed here. That heavy investment into the Spears is definitely throwing off this early game build from Valdemar. Yeah, GUA now going up, and this is just a horrible opening for Valdemar at the moment. Can we take a look at his scouts, see how many sheep are following him at the moment? <laughs> I'm actually, yeah, I'm wondering the same thing too. Like, is he just completely out of sheep? It's only two trailing that scout. I'm actually curious how many GUA has gotten, because based on this, I would think GUA has a massive lead in that department. 
It would be weird if GUA got a lot more sheep than Valdemar because GUA used his Khan for most of the time in order to attack the Spearman from Valdemar. Yeah, it's, it's so awkward. He definitely has more sheep coming in, so it just seems like Valdemar, he didn't really have a lot of early scouting that actually managed to get sheep for him. Because, you see, GUA just brought in a bunch of sheep with a Khan at minute 5. Seems like there was just a lot of unclaimed sheep all around the map that neither of the players took early game. Yeah, that might have definitely been it here. And Valdemar, he's going to be in a very rough position. He's not up yet. He's gathering a lot of berries right now, but the Ottomans, unlike the Dali or the Abbasid, they do take a while in order um, to gather from the berries. So Dali and Abbasid, they do get that 33% increased gathering speed from the berries. Not so much the Ottomans, but now we get the Twin Minaret Madras coming up here for Valdemar. Rushing that up with seven villagers. He wants to get that age up as soon as possible. And look at that, three times double production archers coming up for GUA here. That's going to be a big army very, very soon. I love it. I, I just feel like Valdemar is in such an exposed position right now. If you look at the Ottomans as a civilization, they love to go up to feudal, get the military schools going early so they can start building up their Sipahi numbers. The delay on this feudal age is so severe that when Valdemar arrives the feudal age, even if he drops the military schools, he won't really have any of the Sipahi out to fight those archers. I feel like GUA has such a big window to use these archers here before any cavalry arrives from Valdemar. I don't think you can even really go for Sipahi. I mean, GUA, he still has the spearmen out there on the field. I think it's going to have to be an archer play, and it is so awkward right now for Valdemar. He doesn't have a single military school. He rallied a lot of villagers over to stone now, so he's going to be getting the stone for it. But behind all of that, I feel like GUA, he can just pull on so much aggression right now. There's only a single outpost right now protecting the uh, the stone and the berries here for Valdemar. But it does look like, okay, Blacksmith is going to be coming in in a safe position here, so no chance of that villager getting sniped by any archers right now. Looks like GUA is going to be turning his uh, attention towards the wood line here from Valdemar in the back of his base. Um, that's going to be catastrophic for Valdemar, though. You see, the Khan is already picking away at the villagers, and there is no range or no stable at all for Valdemar right now. When those archers arrive, which is going to be in just a couple of seconds, they can also start picking off those villagers, and this is looking very grim right now for Valdemar. He doesn't really have the duels to defend against two archers, let alone ten of them. Ten archers. The army from the Mongols, it just scaled so, so quickly with the double production. Valdemar doing a good job here of just falling back a little bit with the villagers on the wood line. He's getting siege engineering. I'm I'm a little bit... Wait, no, that's GUA. Sorry, my bad. So GUA <laughs> is getting siege engineering. So ramps could be coming in soon here for him. And, I mean, if he's getting ramps out, then the berries are going to be completely denied here for Valdemar. And he might actually just push onto the wood line as well at that point in time. It's a yeah, very I big army difference right now. I love this call. He sees the tower, he doesn't want to dive it with the archers and the spears. But I think at this point, it's a good investment to make a battering ram. Take out the tower, because as you said, all the food that's available to Valdemar is right there. The hunt is on the front as well, the berries as well. If you deny that, the only source of food that Valdemar will have will be the twin minaret. And that's not really sustainable in the long run. Yeah, the zero point could help Valdemar out if he goes for that. and could potentially give him an additional HE, but it's definitely not a good position for him. In the meanwhile, Jue, he's not he's not really making use of the map control that he has right now. He's still gathering the sheep. I think right now Jue could also be going out onto the deer in the back of his base or in the corner of his base, maybe even the boar uh, on the other side and get a lot of use out of this map control that he has right now. But he is going to be pushing in now with that ram. Military not supporting the ram right now. Takes a little bit of damage. Tower is being fortified. Right now, Valdemar is trying to buy time over here, but this is going to be costly for him. Tower almost lit on fire, and this is just an insufficient army for Valdemar here, Crackety. The tower is about to go down as it got fortified, and there is just not enough of an army here for Valdemar to hold this. Uh, it's just lacking right now. Only nine military against 23. A couple of villagers have gone down. Destruction value looking good for GUA here. He's definitely in control of this game right now going to be able to further take down some of the buildings here in the front of Valdemar's base. Could potentially even further push onto the production buildings that are in the front of Valdemar's TC here. Oh, certainly. I just feel like he doesn't need to. At this point, his position is so, so good. He's confining his opponent into his base, denying his food. I don't think that GUA needs to take any risks here. And he's certainly almost like 
it feels the macro like he's going for a castle age kind of transition. He's already halfway there when it comes to the food. Golden come also looking good right now. Valdemar getting a couple of picks here on the reinforcements with a couple of supply. Definitely the right reaction here from him. Making sure that GUA is not going to be able to just trickle in these units one by one. Oh, good micro. Focuses onto the archers. Lovely micro. Much needed micro there for Valdemar. He needs to pick off those reinforcements, but once again, it feels too little too light. Blacksmith upgrades now coming in for GUA. It's going to give him even more so of an advantage. And once again, he finds an angle on the wood line. He's going to expose a couple of houses. He can ram those down. Right now, Voldemar is 49, now 50 out of 50 population. So losing those houses will also be painful for him. Yeah, it means that no additional units are going to be coming out anytime soon. And now GA is going to be going out onto the map. I think those villagers are going to be taking food from that boar, which is going to support him food-wise for a very long time. 2,000 food on a boar. And now double rams are going to be attacking on those houses. It's going to be an issue for Valdemar. He wants to make a lot of archers, but archers cost wood, and you will need that wood for additional houses soon. Vizier point coming in. And we can see that Valdemar, he now has a lot of sheep under his TC, so he definitely used one of his Vizier point for those bonus sheep. Yeah, he needs to survive right now. That's his only way back into this game. Needs to buy some time, but it's so, so difficult. Now the rams are just taking down the lumber camps. The houses are gone has to rebuild all these houses with little wood bank to work with. Still not a single military school, by the way, Crackety. Means that he's paying oh. full price for many of these expensive units. Yeah, and Valdemar right now, he's just pushing all the way over to GA's base. What this means, though, is that GA's army is a little bit out of position, and the rams in his base are going to get taken down by the villagers. That's heavy losses for GA. 500 wood worth of rams getting taken down here. And the army from Valdemar... Looks like it's going to be able to escape. No matter out there, so no additional movement speed on that army. But I feel like Valdemar might actually now be in a position to stabilize a little bit, or at least buy himself more time. Yeah, certainly. His position is definitely better than what it used to be. It's still a very grim spot for him to be in, but he took out the rams, and this is buying him a lot of precious time. And when you look at the archer numbers, that's where it starts to look decent for Valdemar. He's building those up, and once he gets a decent amount of archers out here, once he has a method to support those with, he can take a reasonable fight and drag this game out. Yeah, dragged out game is definitely what Valma has to be aiming for behind all of that. Another grim thing, though, is that GUA, he's got blacksmith upgrades. Valdema has zero gold. He doesn't even make a mining camp on gold. Oh, Spearmen are trying to take down the stable here, but I'm not sure how worthwhile that trade is. He's not even committing to it in the end. And he lost three Spearmen for that. Maybe even four? Yeah. Close to four. Yeah, that's that's not nice, but I mean, he tried. I don't fault him for that. He still has a lot of spears and he's only encountering a handful of cavalry. But as you said, he needs to be cautious with his numbers because Valdemar is building up. And one thing that Valdemar has been doing really well in this game was just buffering up this aggression. And now once again, intercepting a lot of reinforcements that destroyed value at the bottom left. That was heavily in the favor of GUA about two minutes ago. Now it's essentially even Steven. And Valdemar has been getting away with very nice minor engagements over here in the middle of the field. Yeah, exactly. So Valdemar definitely still in this game. Now military. Definitely still in favor of uh, GUA numbers-wise. But looking at the army value, because Valdemar has a couple of supply in there, the army value is actually fairly similar. Now GUA is going to be on the retreat here with his military. GUA, 30 archers, 17 is the count right now for Valdemar, but 9 Sipahi is definitely a game changer here. And one thing that GUA doesn't really have right now is mobility. On the other side, Valdemar has the Sipahi, and he has been using them very effectively to intercept reinforcements. I think this is probably going to be the point in the game. Yeah, we can see GUA just pulling a lot of villagers over to gold. I think this is going to be the point in the game where GUA starts thinking about going for Castle Age. A little bit of a suboptimal mining operation there. There's no uh, Gur right now that he's got next to his uh, next to his TC, next to the gold mine. But, I mean, he, he's getting a lot of movement speed. There we go. Now the Gur is coming down. He's got Wheelbarrow and the Deerstone, so his villagers are moving at almost lightning speed. They got, like, 1.49 tiles of movement speed per second. They're almost as fast as, as cataphracts. That's ridiculous to think about. Luckily, for Valdemar at least... He is not a Byzantine player right now. He doesn't have Cataplex. He does have Sipahi, though. One thing he's missing, however, and that has been the case for quite some time, 
is a mech, and I think that's a much needed addition to this army if he ever wants to take a fight. Exactly, and now GUA is getting closer and closer to that castle age. Valdemar has got a nice little operation there in the corner of the map, getting deer. That's going to help him a lot with the food income. GUA very, very close now to that castle age, only 100 food remaining. Yeah, that's going to put him in such a good spot. When you look at the blacksmith upgrades as well, he's got all four blacksmith upgrades, and he doesn't want to mess around here. He isn't going up with the step redoubt, he's going up with the coral tie. He wants to dictate the tempo of the game, deploy that coral tie at the front of the enemy base, and then just take one decisive engagement. I think the timing is going to be perfect for this. Numbers are e evening out now when it comes to the army, but the tech advantage is still heavily in the favor of GUA. Yeah, I feel like you can just play it safe now and just make men at arms and just flood the base of Aldemar at this point in time. GA only has one stable though, so I'm wonder and one barracks though, though, so I'm wondering what exactly his army composition is gonna be, if he's just gonna be planning on upgrading his archers. Because if you upgrade the archers, then ideally you're only gonna be fighting against the uh, against the units from Valdemar, rather than his buildings or, or being able to like dive the dive the base from Valdemar. The archers, even if with upgrades in, they're still gonna get taken down by the TC. I love this little expansion to the south, by the way, from Valdemar. He's using the fact that GUA's army is slow moving, and right now it's stationed within his own base. So he's actually using that window to get out for the hunt and secure some much needed food for himself. He's actually pushing out right now. He's got a scout moving forward as well. That's a good play from him. So he always knows where the army is first before his army arrives from his opponent. That way he's not going to be running into any traps. Actually splits him off that uh, now. Couple of Sapai together with the scout. Might be looking for some raids now. Yeah, this is definitely just going to be an attempt to distract his opponent now on the sides with some raids. Valdemar also looking for Castle Age. He's still a good minute away from it. And Gio is going to be using his timing now. Now he's also going to be making men at arms. So a couple of men at arms could definitely idle out the TC from Valdemar now. He's moving in with a Castle Age army now. Timing is going to be perfect. Just as the veterancy upgrade hits, he's going to move in. And the Sipahi are not here to help defend. They are coming in for a counterattack for a raid. They might find a lot of value on the deer, actually, or on the boar um, to the east. But this is a scary force to fight against, especially when you consider that the Kurultai is about to deploy behind them. Yeah, Kurultai is on its way. The movement speed upgrade on the Kurultai also going to be coming in, so it's going to be moving much quicker. From now, here we go. It looks like Valdemar did manage to kill all the villagers that were still remaining on the board. I think those was, was, were like five villagers. And now he's actually collapsing Ooh. onto the wood line from Valdemar, uh, from GUA. So GUA is taking some heavy villager losses here. But behind all of that, Valdemar's base, it's not safe yet. It's not safe yet. Actually, it's a lot of Ooh, villagers going down. Beautiful raid. What a lovely raid. 13 villagers down from GUA here. And Valdemar is on the way to Castle Age Crackety. I feel like these recent moments and the cavalry counterattack is giving so much value for Valdemar here. And if he finds a way to castle and grabs the veterans for his own archers, I think he's going to be in a great spot. Yeah, he's definitely looking to make it work right now. Jue still focused on taking down the buildings here from Valdemar. Now, this still provides him with a lot of value. Valdemar is pretty much population cap right now if he takes down more of these houses. And every single house is going to be giving Jue some of that Mongol raid bounty. So he's getting a lot of resource with that. And there's going to be more men-at-arms and now also crossbowmen coming out from GUA. As soon as the men-at-arms army is going to arrive, that is going to be very tough of Valdemar to hold right now. I don't think he's got the resource. Yeah, he's he's got the, he's not on gold right now. He's only moving out to gold right now at the on the other side of his base. So he doesn't have any gold for any any upgrades or any uh, men at arms. Oh no, he misclicked onto the... Okay, never mind, he noticed. He noticed for a second. If he, if he just kept chopping wood there instead of going onto gold, that could have been devastating for him. Now he is going to be getting some gold. He's got a lot of food in the bank. He just needs the gold in order to get the crossbow out in order to be able to actually deal with those men at arms. Yeah, Voldemort lacking gold here is a big, big issue. The fact that GUA is denying this gold mine is buying so much precious time for GUA here. He's going to shift focus to this little pocket to the south. Right now, Valdemar has a villager lead of seven, but this may disappear in an instant. Villagers Ooh. will be forced to flee here. GUA might He's not have seen out. this. I think yeah, oh, and GUA has Valdemar no vision is on getting that. out. He's getting right, out. He GUA has a, he has a hunch. It looks like GUA has a hunch. He's not seeing... Oh, he saw one of them. He saw one of them. Did he pay attention? It doesn't look like he did. Valdemar yeah, actually he... saves a lot of villagers that way. 
That is a gigantic win there for Valdemar. He loses a five villagers, but he still keeps most of those villagers in that little pocket alive. Villager count now dead even as Valdemar finally got the gold for the costly age upgrades. He's still quite a bit behind when it comes to the blacksmith upgrades, but he's slowly catching up, you feel. And he's always able to survive a little longer, dragging this game out, trying to be get back into this one. Yeah, Valdemar has... Look at the amount of villagers Valdemar has on gold right now. He was really gold stuff here the entire time. And suddenly, look at his resources now. And with that, he's now able to get a lot of upgrades. And yeah, he, he re uh, reassigned his villagers. He had like 10 more villagers there on gold uh, just a couple of seconds ago. And now he's going to be able to queue up a lot of men-at-arms, a lot of crossbowmen, get all the upgrades in that he needs. And another raid is soon going to be coming in here with those Sapai. Yeah, and Lancers are also being mixed in for Valdemar now, alongside some men-at-arms and some crossbows. The armor is getting pretty close to deploying the first Mangonel, which is going to be a terrifying weapon against all these archers and the spearmen from the other side. But that's once again a lovely raid. Second time the GOA is exposed on his Lumberjacks, and the second time that he's going to lose a lot of villagers to this counterattack. Valdemar has been keeping himself alive off the back of these exceptional raids throughout the game. Yeah, but now the MRO movement speed means that the villagers are going to be able to effectively run away from the Sapai here. And at the same time, the army has finally moved on to the base of Valdemar. Villager count even. But the army count, it's 45 to 93, and there are barely any upgrades over on Valdemar's side. No eco upgrades, barely any blacksmith upgrades. Jue has all of them. Yeah, it's, it's so problematic. And he lost all the houses. He's housed right now. You see 95 population out of 80 available. He cannot even deploy any of those premium units right now. In fact, that's probably what bottlenecks the Imperial Armory as well with the Mangonel. And GUA diagnosed this very well. He doesn't let his opponent increase his army size by taking out the houses. Now the fight about to be happening. And there we go. Valdemar builds enough houses to get that Mangonel out. Good shot on those units. But all of these units, not a single unit went down. They're all just going to be healing up now with their Cruel Tie. And it's still a very, very frighteningly large army here. That is terrifying. And you see, two of the landmarks are right next to each other here. Um, there is going to be the Barry landmark now gone. Town Center is right next to it. And I feel like GUA has got a legitimate chance of forcing a victory condition here with the landmarks. Especially now that he's bringing in some spring golds as well to take out the mangonels. I feel like Voldemort is on a very serious timer now. And he's struggling to catch up. He has access to gold and wood, but he's completely out of food, Crackety. Yeah, Voldemort, I think... He's a player that in this situation knows exactly how he can come back, so he's pivoting heavily into Siege now. Lots of Siege coming out. Springles as well, so he's also got Springles against the Springles from GUA. I think GUA really needs to kind of play that Siege game now as well. He needs to make sure that he's got more Springles than his opponent. He should definitely be able to, with all of the damage that he's been able to cause so far. And if GUA wins the Siege War, he's going to be able to close out the game now. He definitely has the military numbers for it. Look at that cruel die spot now, dropping it right next to the enemy town center. He wants to take a fight now, and he does have a massive technological advantage. Also numerical as well, 172 population against 120. Springles need to take shots over here. It's gonna be an even-ish trade, but that is not good enough for Valdemar. He needs to take some exceptional fights here to have a chance of coming back. Springles trading off against each other, both going down. Mangonel is going to be remaining though, but GUA, he's got enough resource to drop three more Springles now. And when you look at the other side, Valdemar is just so, so strained on food. He's got 10 food per minute of an income. He cannot replenish his army at this point. All he has in queue is a Mangonel and two Springles. On the other side, GUA has a massive overwhelming army now taking out some of the production buildings as well. GUA... All he needs is just a handful of Springles to take out the enemy siege, and then he can dive this army. It's impressive that behind all of that, Valdemar still managed to gather up three of the relics out on the map. But it feels like right now, it's it's probably not enough. As you said, like no food income in the bank, and there are no food sources for him in the back of the base. So it, it has to be a farm transition, I feel like, for him, almost. But at this point in time, going for a farm transition is definitely going to break his neck. Uh, certainly. Like, I, I feel like he just doesn't have that um, option right now. Springhold once again trading shots, even Steven trades, but that is not good enough for Valdemar. He's losing the military scores. And don't forget, there's a landmark victory condition being realistic right now. Beautiful Mangonel shots to damage the army, but it just does too little. GUA can fall back and heal this army up. 
Valdemar is forced to take an engagement over here because now he's at the risk of losing both of his remaining landmarks. There aren't too many crossbows in the army from Valdemar. I feel like Jiyue at this point, he could probably just A move into the base uh, from Valdemar and just snipe the mangonels out with mil uh, military units, but you definitely still want to be playing this one safe. Look at Valdemar. He's got three more Springles in the queue. He's so heavily leaning into Siege right now. He knows that the Siege is his only lifeline left in the game. If he's able to like get some good mangonel shots, he can still turn this game around. The eco is not that... Uh, there's not that grand of a disparity in the economy. Yeah, that's a big thing. As you said, Valdemar being able to pick up three relics is definitely a game changer here. But now, his villagers are exposed and this is something that GUA hasn't yet punished. A lot of small pockets of eco for Valdemar scattered across the map, undefended. If GUA starts punishing that, he can shut down most of Valdemar's eco. And GUA now also getting out a lot of these Springles. And these Springles are, they're a little bit stronger. They do a little bit more damage with the curl tie as well. Now there aren't really any critical numbers here to be hit. They still need two um, shots in order to kill the enemy Springles. But it still helps. It still helps. And there's also healing. I think the healing also works on the siege unit, so he doesn't need to pull any villagers to repair them as well. With some micro, could be pulling those back. And Valdemar, he still has like 12 villagers over on the side from GUA, chopping wood. Yeah, it's perplexing that those were never actually discovered. In fact, they are closer to depleting the forest than getting killed. Finally, a breakout over here from Valdemar, but this is just a very inefficient fight so far. Charging into the Spearman with the Sipahi. Spearman getting repelled as well. Siege not really a factor in this game so far, at least not in this fight. Both the players very cautious with their own Springgolds and Mangonels. Finally, Springgolds will trade off against each other here. Slight edge here for Valdemar, but his infantry is disappearing. And you're starting to feel that raw numbers advantage appearing on the field for GUA. And now Valdemar, he's pushing onto the curl tie, but if GA just uses this chance, with all of the units being so close to the curl tie and take a fight there, there's so many military schools now that Valdemar rebuild that could be taken down as well. Yeah, GUA has so need... many resources in the bank all of the, behind all of this. Oh, GUA has got a lot indeed. Right now he's close to pop cap, so at this point, next step could actually be Imperial for him at this base. But for now, he wants to maintain that presence next to the enemy base. Slight of a disconnected fight here. Gets a lot of damage done onto his army, with some of his army just at the back line. But it looks like GUA might be thinking about Imperial Age at this point. He's calling off his army, he's piling up resources, and I just don't see anything else coming in for him right now. He's pop-capped, so that seems to be the only legitimate option. Question is, what landmark are we going to see from him? I feel like it doesn't really matter what landmark at this point in time. The main thing that he really wants is, he's one of, he wants to get that roller shutting triggers upgrade on his Springle. Going from 10 to 12 range on those Springles means that he is going to be able to win every single siege engagement. And there would be no way for Valdemar to still play defensive with his siege. And yeah, I think he's definitely moving on to that. Food is already there, just needs the gold. He's Does he even have any villagers in gold right now? I don't see any villagers from GUA on gold. I think no. it just ran out for him. He's got zero per minute, and this is where we have to highlight that he didn't even collect any of the relics, despite having most of the map control for himself. Actually called off his assault here, pulling back his forces. Definitely giving a lot of breathing room for Valdemar, but Valdemar's eco is still so, so feeble. 108 food per minute. He needs to make a farm transition at some point, and this might be his only window where he can afford to do that. Yue is sending 15 villagers over to the other side and just taking Valdemar's gold there. That, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. <laughs> I, I guess that's what Valdemar gets for taking all the wood from GUA's side. It's uh, kind of a base trade setup here a little. <laughs> but yeah, Valdemar's economy, it's... I. You look at the numbers, right? And sure, it's not a lot of food per minute, but overall, it's not that big of a disparity between the two. The relics definitely do make up a little bit here right now for the villager disparity. And Valdemar is getting that fourth relic in, so that's looking good. And White Stupor being rushed up with a bunch of villagers, 27 villagers working on that. That's going to be coming in very, very quickly. And with that, I feel like we're going to be very soon seeing that uh, rolling shutter trigger upgrade. And as soon as that comes in, there's just not going to be any way for Valdemar to win the Siege Wars again. It's not just Roller Shutter Triggers, it's also the fact that you are going to have the Elite upgrade, a layer of Blacksmith upgrades available as well for these units. So you can justify diving underneath that Town Center a lot easier as well. Obviously, 
roller shard triggers will be a big factor as well in these siege wars. And it's lovely to see how GUA just pulls back his army all the way into his base. He knows that Voldemar needs to take a fight before those upgrades hit, and he just doesn't want to give one to him. Exactly. Now double Springles coming out. Upgrade is already halfway complete. Valdemar now starting to put up some walls as well on his side of the map. Wants to make sure there's not going to be too much raiding going on potentially. There's a couple of villagers sneaking through though for GUA. It looks like he wants to get an outpost up there. Yeah, he, he started doing this as well. He's got a lot of stone in the bank. He could definitely get some outposts with some weapon emplacements on them. And I think that would be a great way to confine Voldemort inside his base. Voldemort has definitely done the right things to come back into this game, but he still has a massive technological and economical deficit. And look at that, Springle's the got Siege some Army. On the That's actually a very heavily damaged Coral Die right now. Yes, and it's not also a... blocking that. Yeah, he just blocked the Coral Die deployment. This is a good fight for Voldemort, or at least as good as it gets with the Coral Die not having been deployed. Elite upgrade not yet in for GUA. He's trying to buy some time over here, taking a lot of casualties as he's retreating. But Korota is about to be deployed. Elite status coming in as well for many of these troops. And I feel like we could be seeing here the final fight of this game. Korota are up. Elite units as well, overwhelming everything that Voldemort has. Voldemort is getting cleaned up over here. Even the villagers are rallied into this engagement. It's not like they're needed though, Crackety. Most of this is going to be cleaned up by the army. Yeah, it looks like Valdemar won the siege fight, but in the end, not enough units, not enough technologies, and with that, game is going to get cold, and GUA takes it very, very convincingly. That was a that was a very strong game from GUA. A little bit unfortunate, I feel like, the start there for Valdemar. I think there were a couple of things that went awry for him, but he did an amazing job of almost coming back in that one. Certainly. I feel like the start essentially lost this game for him, but given how bad that start was, he survived for a remarkably long amount of time. Um, the way that he snuck out for the hunt, the way that he escaped that counterattack from GUA, the way that he managed to secure four relics despite having little to no map control, just goes to show how well he did under all this pressure. It's just the fact that the deficit that he started with was so, so severe.